Shabbat Shalom, everybody, or if this is not your Shabbat and you're just joining in with us to celebrate a, another Yomin to fellowship, we welcome you right now to ElioChannel.com. We praise Abba Yah for this new Yom and the opportunity to share this exciting things we're about to share with you. And we just pray right now and allow the presence of his Ruach to be in the midst of us, the Ruach Neshima anointing to be upon us and the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet like liquid oil liquid fire to come inside us and burn inside us and stir up the the gifts uh, the uh, matath debar word of Yahuwah to come forth in the Shem of Yahushua and give us a flow of the Ruach to move and share. And Father, as we in Emonah start these verses, uh, many things could shoot off, shoot out of it. But we ask you to keep us in one heart and one mind. As new people come in, we rebuke any distractions or problems as they come in late, but everything would flow good, and we rebuke the devourer that would try to malfunction our equipment and electronics like happened a little bit earlier, and we just pray that everything will flow good with everybody's Wi-Fi, with everybody's modem, and with the frequency going out, and we thank you, Father, for giving us favor to be back online on YouTube uh, so I can put the stuff back out up this next few days and we give you praise and honor that we know we have to literally divorce youtube eventually show us what place to go is it rumble or whatever give us a word and show us how to do it and we give you praise and honor and brother's going to continue the prayer abba kadosh we thank you for this day abba we ask that you be with us as we go through these scriptures and that as uh we ask that you will lead brother um as he um as he reads this, whatever scriptures that we need to go through in the shema yahushua hamashiach we I make a prayer over all of the kodeshim who are on this straight who are on this station with us today abba that you will be with them to give us a heart and a mind of understanding we give you great esteem and we thank you hallelujah, hallelujah. praise yeah. yah we give praise and honor and thanksgiving to the father and um it, this, this, what I'm going to share with you could go in a rabbit hole, but we don't want it to go in a rabbit hole because we're just going to share a little bit about it. And I'm going to show a little bit. Um, we are in a, a ruach of inspectancy right now. Man has tampered with our system and put this artificial system that's causing chaos. They want to create Armageddon. They want to create a false Armageddon. They want to create chaos so they can bring in their, their new agenda and enslave humanity. But we're hip to it. We're aware of it. And Father will always protect us and direct us and guide us. And as we walk in the Ruach Adosh, we can be with 10,000 on one side, 1,000 on the other side, crispy critter with a nuke. And if he wants us to live, we're going to live. We're going to survive it and walk through the ashes. Are you hearing me, people? The Father will protect us at that hour and time, if so be it his will. But I tell you right now, as David Wilkerson used to say in New York, I'd rather go out in a great flame of fire than try to survive and look for food and trash cans after the chaos starts. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but... You know, years ago, the father showed me something. We we had generators, we had diesel fuel, we had all kinds of things in our little place, in our, in our little thing over there at the ranch, as well as in Cabazon. And we accumulated everything you could think of, we accumulated everything we could think of. The bedrooms, we had houses with bedrooms and double bunks, everywhere with bunks, and we were getting ready for y2k or anything after that right now y2k did happen and i'm not going to get into it you know some people think it did no I, we had another old computer in our company and it fried up it, the dates did freeze up now but i had a dream and the father showed me a dream and my wife and i were in the midst of chaos on the earth 
And because of my ex knowledge through LA down in Boyle Heights, Los Angeles, I used to know how to get around through the sewage tunnels, the big, huge monster, you know, 14, five circle, 14 foot circle tunnels of water drains and the square ones where you can put cars in. My homies and I, we used to do things and travel through those things and get out and get away miles away on, on roads, but not in, uh, uh, going through the tunnels, you could pop out real quick and be in another neighborhood. So I had this dream, and in this dream, my wife and I popped out of this area. She was in a, in a, a fenced-in area, and people were masked, and people were all kinds of things. She had another dream, too, that same week of the same thing. And I, I, was, I managed to club somebody or something to take their uniform, and I got my wife out of that cage, and I took her, and we ended up in Burbank okay coming out of a tunnel and the people there did not know what was going on are you hearing me they did not they were looking down towards Los Angeles seeing the fiery furnace and the chaos everything going down over there but over there they did it and the father showed me he says they cannot do every city and town at the same time they don't have enough manpower or resources to do it they got to sectionize everything and work their way up to the people that live in the in outside the cities, suburbs, and up into the, you know, little towns and stuff. So, and then the father showed me as I was traveling, I, I ended, he showed me where to go to get food. He showed me where to get water. He, I found a weapon. I found all kinds of stuff. And, and we were in survival mode, my wife and I, and then I woke up. And the father said, everything you saved up here is not for you. In my mind, I said, I questioned what he told me. He said, you saved up for somebody else to find it so they could survive. And other people that, that were out of their house with all the stuff they saved up, you're going to find. Just like other people are going to find your stuff if you're not here. You think you're going to be here and knowing when the, it's, you don't know the day and the hour. So stop this now. So I stopped. I stopped it. And I realized through Emonah, no matter where I'm at, if I'm on the freeway and have nothing, he would provide for me. Whatever I need, fuel, whatever. I know we all, some of us know how to get fuel. Some of us know how to make pumps and get fuel out of electricity, out of gas stations. You know, some of us know how to do that stuff. And, but other people can't. And so I'm going to share something with you that is going gonna, is gonna to really shock you when I'm going to tell you. Because you see, in Christianity, we are living in a box. Is it going to end up like this? No. Turn off the lights. Turn off the lights. Make it so black that no one can see their own hand. Make it so black. Is it going to be a, a uh, uh, what they call a, a lunar eclipse over the sun? And stay that way, like what happened, Yahushua got an extra day of light on one side of the earth, and then there was documents that on the other side of the earth, there was uh, nothing but darkness, but he had light to fight the war and finish. Or is it going to be cloudy, dark, like the moon there? Or is it going to be where they're going to gob with pain, according to Revelations uh, chapter 16, verse 10, which we will be reading, where they go with pain, they're biting their tongue, they're, they're, they, they can't see nothing. Even if they light a match or turn on a flashlight, everything's dead, okay? Which is it going to be? We're going to look at that right now, and it's to prepare us, not to scare us. Because just like the Father showed me, no matter what happens, I'm gonna, if, if I choose for you to be alive through it, you're going to get through it. Don't worry. And you're going to find things that other people left and everything you left, somebody's going to find. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you're not going to be home. You don't know if you're going to be home. The odds of being home is like a million to one when things hit the fan. Okay? Even when I work and drive, I say, I, I, I got my mind working. What if I'm 60 miles and everything shut down with the EMP and I have to get home and my wife's home? You know what I mean? What do I got to do? I got to figure out a way to get through a crazy city, 60 miles for, while I'm driving in order to get home. And my wife and I talked that where we're going to meet. We got meeting points. But three days of darkness, I'm going to tell you where that idea came from. But the reason I'm showing this on the screen, because, excuse me for a minute, 
There's a movie out, Three Days of Darkness. You can go watch it if you want. I haven't seen it yet. Okay. I borrowed their picture. <laughs> this is a picture from the movie, right? So it's on the stream, it's on the video. But then I started looking around and seeing other Christian uh, pe preachers. Very few were preaching on Three Days of Darkness. Very few. I only found two Catholic books because the Catholic Church has a, a prophet eye that the Pope in charge now, living large, is wicked. And something's going to happen where there's going to be three days of darkness throughout the whole Catholic Church and throughout the earth. And the Catholic people are going to survive it. This is what they're saying. This is their books. And the guy's Catholic that writes his book. Okay, I listened to some of his stuff a little bit, just, just briefly. But they got this fantasy belief that and baby Jesus, Mary's holding baby Jesus, and she's going to get us through darkness just like he's holding Jesus as a baby. You know, I said, what? <laughs> okay, Mary and Jesus. You know, we know those are fake it to make it ideas, but they're, they're talking about it, that they're expecting this ancient prophecy from a bishop that the, that the Vatican's going to be so dark and the earth is going to become dark and Mary's going to carry them through. Do you believe that? I mean, you you got to have a different M or not to believe that and, and because it's all based on a bishop's so-called prophet line. But I'm going to show you something in the scriptures, which is we should be prepared for. We should prepare, according to the book of Azon, for a time of darkness. And then I'm going to show you where they get the idea of three days. All right. So we're going to go ahead and go. Do you want to add any idea of input before I go to the script? Well, I'm looking for the scripture, brother. No, go ahead. Did you hear about anything like that in the Catholic Church? No, I've never heard of that. Yeah, it's that, becoming very popular. It shocked me when I saw be, it. Uh, that must be a a, a very a new uh, type of belief because I've never heard of that. These are Catholics that still want the Latin mass. And they speak, the guy opened up in prayer in Latin, and he was very religious, but he was Catholic, and he says, I'm not a, in the clergy, but there's the prophecy of the bishops that the Pope in charge right now is wicked. Right. He's a child, right. and they're saying it. I said, which is true, because uh, even the president of Argentina was exposing about the Catholic. That's right. Bishop. Yeah, I, I haven't heard of, I, I haven't heard of that, but I believe what you're saying is, is true, but I can tell you this, that the wicked are getting more wicked and the righteous are getting more righteous. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that that is what I just said is 100 percent scriptural. But remember, so, too, the, the Roman Catholic Church says they're going to be the ones to talk to the uh, aliens. aliens to the aliens. That's be, right. And wreak havoc on the earth. They're going to be. Now, the I heard of them earth. saying they're that they're going to baptize them. Right. So maybe this is linked to this. But they're, they're, Three days of darkness that they're watching with their Lucifer telescope. I, I was looking for for a verse that about the three days of darkness, uh, because I I'm, I know I've heard I've heard it before, uh, and and I'm pretty sure I read it that, but I don't have the scripture, so I'm not going to say go to this scripture or whatever. But darkness, I mean, I don't think that man can survive without any light at all. We're going to see that. We know. know that's true. Right. Scientifically, you can't. I mean, you yeah. go crazy, right? Or, or you'll you'll die. You know, I, I don't. You know, besides what you were saying earlier, which I don't want to put out. Go ahead and and find now, your. Now I've been uh, I've been in a cell, locked up, in my back lifestyle, and it was darkness. They locked the door I'm in, and they locked the door that opened the door to get into those doors, six rooms in that dungeon, and it was pitch black. And I, I it was I had a really I mean, I didn't believe it in the creator, but I was calling out to anybody that can help me, please keep my sanity, you know, because it was horrible. And um, so, but it wasn't pitch black. My eyes got adjusted some way and I could see my hand a little bit. But imagine you can't even see your hand, your feet, your body, whatever in that condition, you know, it'll be so horrible. Now, we're going to start off in Bereshit chapter one and chapter three and we're going to start off right there we're going we're right there in front of it but what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm just going to brother's going to read but what i'm going to do is i'm going to read 
skipping verse 2. In the beginning, Allah created the Shamaim and the Eretz. And the Elohim said, let, let light come to be, and light came to be. Now, light came to be before the moon and the Shamash. <laughs> right. It's amazing. And Elohim saw the light, and it was good, and Eloah separated the light from the darkness. All right. It matches good. If you take verse 2 out, everything will be fine. But you have to go through 2 to realize something. And there, go ahead and read 2, brother. Okay, 2 says, and the, earth be, and the earth came to be formless and empty, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Ruach of Elohim was moving on the face of the waters. Now, on this translation, ISR uh, 1998, it says, uh, where it says, be, came to be. If we look it up in Hebrew, basically, the earth became void. Let me look it up in King Imus. Yeah, and the earth came to be formless and empty. And darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Ruach of Eloah was moving on the face of the waters. All right. So now, so it's without form, and it is void. But he didn't create that. Something happened. Now, where is this verse in the scriptures? There's another verse that tells you what happened to the pre-Adamic age, before Adam and Eve age, okay, of that particular beings. Whoever they were, Father doesn't want us to know, Okay. And so we're going to go to Yemiyahu chapter 4, verse 23, brother. Okay, it's 23. Uh, uh, Yemiyahu 4, 23. I looked at the earth and saw it was formless and empty. And the Shamayim, they had no light. And the now, Shamayims now, had no light. They now, had... in the King Imus, is is the same way it was in, in the King Imus, without form and void. Yeah, here it says form and empty. Formless and empty. So what happened? Let's keep reading. Let's find out what happened to those inhabitants. And what, what, what is this? Hey, can I just share something, brother? That Hebrew word, though, is haya, right? To be, to form. And the ancient Hebrew lexicon, when you, the pictograph, it says, represents one who is looking at a great sight with hands raised and taking a long breath. Like in like, shock, like breathing, like, yeah, like breathing into it, ex breathing into existence, like a breath. So it's wow. a yah in Hebrew, but when you look at the ancient pictograph pictures and break it out, right, it's like. But isn't a, that what Yahuwah said like to Adam to? And breathing life into it. Yeah. Isn't, isn't that what uh, what Yahuwah said to Moshe when he asked him, "Whom shall I say he sent me?" And he, what did he say? Oh, yeah. Ayah. I share yeah, yeah. But anyway, like let me let me read this real quick where it says it says I looked at the earth and saw it was formless and empty and the Shamayim had no light. I looked at the mountains and saw they shook. This is verse 24 and all the hills were swaying. I looked 25 and I looked and saw there was no man and all the birds of the Shamayim had fled. I looked and saw the garden land was a wilderness and all its cities were broken down at the presence of Yahuwah by his burning displeasure. Keep reading. It says, For thus said Yahuwah, All the Aretz shall be a ruin, but I shall not make a complete end. On account of this, let the Aretz mourn, and the Shamayim ab above be dark. But I have spoken because I have purposed and shall not relent. Nor do I turn back from it. All the city is fleeing from the noise of the horsemen and the bowmen. Then they shall go into bushes and climb up on the rocks. All the city is forsaken and no one is dwelling in it. And when you are ravaged, what would you do? Though you put on crimson... Though you adorn yourself with ornaments of gold, though you enlarge your eyes with paint and beautify yourself in vain, your lovers despise you. They seek your life. For I have heard a voice as of a woman in labor, the distressed 
the distress as of her who brings forth her first child, the voice of the daughter of Zion. She, be, she bewails herself. She spreads out her hands, saying, Woe to me, for my being faints because of killers. Now, this is exactly the, 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 uh, the words that were found in Bereshi 1 2, without form and void and empty, and destruction and swaying. And we're going to look at another one. We're going to go to Yemiyahu 24. Uh, same book, but chapter 24. And we call this the pre Adamic age. This is a nickname. Now, Rebbe's have more information on it. They probably exaggerate more stuff about it. And they got more information about the, what happened before uh, Adam and Hawa and the garden. And if Adam means blood, or you could call it mankind because he got red blood. No matter what color skin you are, you all got the same blood, right? So, but what was before? What was before uh, Before this destruction in verse 2 of everything that existed, cities, towns, peoples, you name it, what was, what was before? It's a guess. It's a theory because we don't have the information. The Father don't want us to know that, uh, except that if we... If we continue living sin, he will cause all chaos and destruction. He uses hail, he uses storms, he uses floods to whip and spank people back to repentance. But instead, they want to take their planes and spray the air to control the weather instead of people praying for rain for the harvest of the feast days. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, they don't want to pray. They don't want to be... Zadik Talmudim Kodeshim, and that's the way you get your harvest cycles by obeying Torah, obeying the feast, and obeying the the givings and the gifts. And then the, the next year he promises rain. Okay, so it, the promise is there. It works. I've seen it work. Okay, so now we we don't know what was going on back then, but we're going to go in and start from verse four. Give me out twenty four four. Give me Yahoo 24.4. So I can tell you, brother, that, that most people don't want to be bothered with this stuff. They want to live, go on living their life and be totally ignorant of, of the Torah and, and of anything that has to do with the Father. Right. Abba. 24, verse number 4 says, Again, the word of Yahuwah came to me, saying, Thus said Yahuwah, the Eloah of Israel, like these good figs, so do I acknowledge the exiles of Yehuda, whom I have sent out of this place for their own good into the land of, Gaz of the Gazdim. And I shall set my eyes on them for good and shall bring them back to this land. And I shall build them and not pull them down and shall plant them and not pluck them up. And I shall give them a heart to know me that I am Yahuwah, and they shall be my people, and I shall be their Eloah, for they shall turn back to me with all their heart. At the spoilt figs, right. and as the spoilt figs that could not be eaten because they are so spoiled, for thus said Yahuwah, so do I give up Zidkiyahu, Zid Zid the sovereign of Yehuda, Zidkiyahu, the, the sovereign of Yehuda, his heads, the rest of Yerushalayim, who remained in the land and those who dwell in the land of Mizraim. And I shall make them a horror and to all the reigns of the Aretz for evil, to be a reproach and a byword, a mockery and a curse in all the places which I drive them. And I shall send the sword, the scarcity of food and the pestilence among them till they are consumed from the land that I gave to them and their fathers. So they didn't deserve the land and it's happening again. There's so much things going on right now. We're finding out we're going to have, I'm going to have a sermon about a humanist and the humanist manifesto, but it sparked me because brother found it in a rabbinical book saying they created humanism, the religion of humanism, that they could become mighty ones. 
And we're not going to go on that topic yet, but we're going to have some good stuff about it because these guys, this Hebrew guy, that Jewish guy, I'll use the word Jewish, okay? The Jewish guy that declares himself Jewish, but he's making AI or put artificial intelligence in human beings with chips to convert them mankind so they could be now the creator. They're no more the created, the creator. And, uh, and humanism is that, you know, they could be advanced to be a mighty one. So they're going to be destroyed. This, so, their, their doctrines, a belief system of rabbinical Talmud is like figs that cannot be eaten. We're going to go to Yeshiyahu uh, 13, 6, 10. Yeshiyahu 13, 6, the judgment of Babylon. How for the day of Yahuwah is near. It comes as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore, all hands go limp. Every man's heart melts, and they shall be afraid. Pains and sorrow shall take hold of them, and they are in pain as a woman in labor. They are amazed at one another, their faces aflame. See, the day of Yahuwah is coming fierce, with wrath and heat of displeasure, to lay the earth waste and destroy its sinners from it. For the stars of the Shamayim and the, their constellations do not give off their light. The sun shall be dark at its rising, and the moon not send out its light. And I shall punish the world for its evil and the wrong for their crookedness, and shall put an end to the arrogance of the proud and lay low the pride of the ruthless. I shall make mortal man scarcer than fine gold Ooh. and make a mankind scarcer than the gold of Ophir. Which they say is the Philippines. Uh, so I shall make the Shamayim tremble, and the Ares shall shake from her place, and the wrath of the of of Yahuwah of hosts, and in the day of the heat of his displeasure. And it shall be as the hunted gazelle, and as a sheep that no man takes up. Every man turns to his own people. And everyone flees to his own land. Okay, stop there. So now, it's it's talking about uh, the, what they call, when we say the Yom of Yahuwah. If, if I use English, it'll be the day of Yahuwah. Okay? The day of Yahuwah is throughout the scriptures and is very deep destruction and punishment. With wrath, heat of displeasure. Now, in Romeim, I'm not going to go to it. I'm being quickened by the Ruach Kadosh right now. It talks about that that when the day of Yahuwah comes, uh, his wrath will go upon the wicked, wicked, but we are not appointed to wrath. You can just look, look, type in the word appointed to wrath, and you'll look up the scriptures that say we are not appointed to wrath because we're, we're Zadik, Talmudim, Kodeshim, we're righteous. Okay? So... The wrath to come is another term you can find to research scriptures concerning end time stuff, right? But it says we're not appointed wrath because we're keep the Torah. We believe in the Mashiach. We're keeping the Shabbat. So how the Father is going to protect us, I don't know. I do have a video years ago. It's on my archives of videos about uh, Gushin, the land of Gushin. The, wherever your feet should trod and where you dwell, He'll put the land of Gushin protection around you in the day of darkness, in the day of wrath, in that yom. He'll protect us with light. Well, what happened in Egypt? We're going to find out what happened in Egypt, okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to go to Exodus 10, 22, 21 and 22. Read them both, please. It says, and Yahuwah said to Moshe, stretch out, stretch out your right, your hand toward the Shamayim and let there be darkness over the land of Misraim even a darkness which is felt. Whoa! And Moshe stretched out his hand toward the Shamayim, and there was thick darkness in all the land of Misraim for three days. All right. Now, the, this is why we get the term three days of darkness, because the Father sent through Moshe ten plagues against what? against the mighty ones of Misarim. He specifically says, and you've heard me say it, you've read, seen the scriptures, and you can look it up, that he says, I, I go against, 
Misarim's mighty ones, their deities. In, in the English, they would put G-O-D-S. So it's a thick darkness that you could be felt. Well, what mighty one was light? Well, a bunch of Hebrews and Christians got together and they researched the, 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 the main pyramids and they realized that there was another building that was harvesting and generating electricity through the Nile River going into the main pyramid and the gold tip was the Wi-Fi technology on the top of the main pyramid to send the signal. So when Biba went to Mizarim at night and they looked over, they seen a city of light. And they would say, whoa, the mighty ones are among us in this city. People would think that because of the technology they had and only the elitist had it, okay? But when the plague came, Look at verse 23. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days, while all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Where was their dwellings? Goshen. Yeah, in Goshen. So they had light. Everything was normal. And, it was, it, it, and over there, in that area where they had power, they had electricity. But imagine you're in a camp of slaves and you don't got electricity. You got candles, but they're over there and they got light. But now they're dark and you're light. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So the fathers, he's he's spanking their mighty ones, what they believed in. Of course, they, every mighty one was of the plagues of the 10 plagues of, of the father used Moshe to stretch his staff and stretch it over Misanim. These are different de deities because the father said it in the word these i'm gonna i'm gonna send the plagues against their mighty ones 10 mighty ones well we got mighty ones on this earth you got they got mighty ones they worshiping ai we're not going to get in detail today about them making a, an image of the beast and causing it to speak and it's speaking now the ai is in the cloud going through the system and then yeah. now and then also a nuclear weapon. That's like a mighty one. It's a stand-up object. It's almost like an oblix. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. It, it can obliterate like the hundred times brighter than the Shemesh. So they have other, they have a lot of mighty ones. Uh, imagine right now if what would happen if there was an EMP and all Wi-Fi was down in everybody's phone. What would these children do? Their mighty one is dead. Right. Their phone and their Facebook and their TikTok, everything's dead. These are mighty ones that they rise, instead of rising up in the morning and praying to the Father, thanking him for a new young, they rise up and look at TikTok. They rise up and look at their Facebook. Yeah, they, they rise up and they rise up and they open up their their iPads and their computers and they and they go straight to their video games or whatever it is that, that entertains them. That's their mighty one. Why? Why their why their coffee is in the brewer? They're already they're forget coffee. They're on their phone. <laughs> now we're, we're we're not talking about those of you who open up your your uh, your tablet and start reading the word. That's that's, that's a different, different story. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about those who entertain themselves, keep themselves entertained with their iPads and computers and phones by watching TikTok uh videos uh secular youtube videos and all kinds of other stuff and they don't even give no esteem to the father no and see so those mighty ones of, of throughout the earth right now of technology and even you know the look at how we just discussed what they're, they're saying that what 80 percent got some form of the jab and 80 percent of the population has got that 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 junk inside their body. And now they found out that the insert shows HIV. So it's a time. It's a, you like tick a clock and say, I only got five years to live, 10 years to live. It's yeah. a population reduction. So the insert now, the inserts uh, of, of the boosters that they're giving out, uh, they, it came out that, yeah, that it has the, it, it, they're literally giving people shot with HIV in it. I mean, think about that. Think about how wicked that is. To get to actually be given people disease, diseases, and and through through the boosters, 
and then we're supposed to uh, believe in their in their inoculation program and if you don't then uh, you're not privy to uh, some of the freedoms that everybody else has if you didn't take those then you couldn't go in restaurants if That's you didn't right. take the not go in the theater if you did not take the shot, couldn't get on the airplane you cannot go to another country because remember the god of this world is in charge right now the god of this world is in charge until right. Yahushua comes back, until the reign of Yahuwah comes down on us. Amos 6, uh, 8, 9. And we're going to go 8, 9 and 5, 8. But we're going to go 8, 9 first. And I don't know if it's the right order. It was scribbled on a piece of paper. Chapter 8, verse number 9. Yeah, chapter 8, verse 9. Uh, this is Amos chapter 8, verse number 9. The, com the coming day of bitter mourning, and it shall and it shall be in that day, declares the Master Yahuwah, that I shall cause the sun to go down at noon, and shall darken the earth on a day of brightness, and shall turn your festivals into mourning, and all your songs into lamentation, and bring sackcloth on all your on all your loins and baldness on every head and shall make it like mourning for an only son and it's it's in like a day of bitterness but i want to just read this real quick right again and baldness on every head wow so then uh when when this day of they're darkness, pulling their hair man yeah when this day of darkness comes darkness comes uh people will be bald will go bald on every head, it says on every head, all the people who are in darkness are going to pull their hair out. It says that and that the, that that in that day day declares the master Yahuwah that I shall cause the sun go down to go down at noon on a bright day on and shall darken the earth on a day of brightness and shall turn your festivals into mourning and all your songs into lamentation and bring sackcloth on all loins and baldness on every head and shall make it like mourning for an only son and it's in, it's in like a day of bitterness so now some say that this event's going to take place during the feast calendar one of the feasts because it says festivals into mourning that they're going to be celebrating and it's going to be turned into darkness at that hour okay and that's a hint of this, what we're going to continue to read about the day of darkness or three days of darkness. Now, um, we're going to look where they get the word three days of darkness. It hasn't appeared yet, but we're going to look and see it. Now go to chapter 5, verse 8. I just wanted to ask a question, brother. Do you think that that, where it's, it says, and, and shall turn your festivals into mourning, do you think that means our festivals, that we're that we're having or do you think that that means the festivals of christmas and thanksgiving and, and of the wicked wow. Which festival? so just think is that the festival of the wicked of maybe they're celebrating um the day of estarta of easter maybe, maybe they're celebrating the day of of uh of the um of the uh the winter solstice which is christmas christmas is the day of the winter solstice it's the sun god day that's right and they're gonna pull all their hair out on that day they're gonna grab their hair and yank out clumps of hair because of their disobedience to not doing yahuwah's festivals or even what, though we told them over and over yeah they're falling into their rabbinical right. calendar with the gregorian right it could be that too for we're we're declaring what yahuwah is saying and people are not listening and they're all, they, they go, maybe you got one of your feet are on one side of the fence and the other one's on the other side, but you don't want to come over to this side. You want to stay and you want to do uh, Hamatza and then you want to turn around and do Christmas. Yeah, they're huh? doing both right now. Yeah, and, and you're going to be in, in on that day when you're doing Christmas and guess what's going to happen? You're going to go, you're going to be seen as being on that side of the camp. Yeah. On the opposite side. And you're going to, pull your hair out in clumps because you're of your disobedience 
you know, so think very hard. I'm sorry. I just that's all right. That's that. good. That's a good point. You know, he, in other words, he's 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 going to shock them in the biggest celebration and the brightest of their day with darkness. Right. You know, whatever the celebration is and the brightness of their, you know, chapter five, verse eight, chapter five, almost verse oh, eight. He who made Kema and Kasil and who turns the shadow of death into morning and the day of and darkness and darkened the day into night. Let me read that again. So he who made Kima and Kasil. Which and, refers to the constellations. Right, right. And who turns the shadow of death into morning and the darkened day into night, who is calling for the waters of the sea and pours them out on the face of the Aretz. Yahuwah is his name. Now let's go to Zechariah. Chapter 14, verse 6 and 7, and then skip to 13. In that day it shall be, there is no light, it is dark. And it, let me read that one more time, verse number 6. And in that day it shall be, there is no light, it is dark. And it shall be one day which, which is known to Yahuwah, neither day or night, but at evening time, there shall be light. And in that day, it shall be that living waters flow from Yerushalayim, half of them toward the Eastern Sea and half of them toward the Western Sea in summer as well as in winter. Now go to, now go to uh, uh, verse 13. And they're gonna, they're doing this today and they welcome them. Of course, they wanna give them tall mood and teach them Noahide laws and convert them to darkness. But there's there's hints here. Hints too. I mean, well, you can't discern the times at all. The time of the day, like. Right, you don't know what time it darkness. is. There's a lot as far as the natural, but then there's, there's the natural part of it, and then there's the spiritual part of it too. Um, but, but we've seen that when we would go to Alaska, where you wouldn't even know what time of the day it was, because it was kind of like dark, but it wasn't all the way dark. So I understand what is saying by that. You know, you didn't yeah. know there was, you didn't know what time it was if it was morning or evening because well, it stayed the same the whole time. As we're going through it, I'm kind of glancing at the Hebrew words and like dark. I mean, there's different uh, there's different applications. Dark context applications, yeah, applications of the word dark. But like in in that case, in where are we at Hosea or is it uh, like here? It has to do with the traversing of the sun as far as being able to tell know the time of day like right. and then in the hebrew understanding too it could be not having the seasons at all right. so there would be that would create a lot of chaos in the world and there's hints there everywhere showing where there's darkness there's a, there's something coming it's happened the father's done some things like that before he's done it in egypt misarim and now let's go to verse two. One, two, and three. Okay, Israel and Yehuda are, are unrepented. Come and let us turn back to Yahuwah, for he has torn, but he does heal us. He has stricken, but he binds us up. After two days, he shall revive us. On the, excuse me, on the third day, on the third day, on the third day. A day is a thousand years, a thousand years is as one day. And on the third day, he shall raise us up so that we live before him. So let us know, let us pursue to know Yahuwah. His, his going forth is as certain as the morning. And he comes to us like the rain, like the latter rain, watering the earth. Okay, stop right there. Just to, Let's just kind of throw it out there that when this thing of darkness comes, there's two things that are going to happen. Everybody that knows Yahuwah and is aware of it are going to be in prayer and ready and prepared. Right. But the ones that are backslidden, they're probably going to have, a, I mean, they're going to be in darkness, but they're going to repent. They're going to cry. They're going to go with their mouth. They're going to, they're going to be in pain. It's darkness that they can feel like, feel it like pain. And they're going to repent. And they're going to be revived. And they'll come back. 
The, the Mashiach was in the grave three days and three nights, and he rose again on the third day. And we, them, them that are in this incident, I believe that we're going to be fine. We're going to be in the land of Gushin, and there's going to be light in our home. It might be dark outside. We don't want to go outside, but it's going to be light in our home. But imagine this for a minute, that, that the darkness, we're going to read the scriptures. Not only are we seeing the darkness so bad, they feel it, right? But also we're going to read in Revelations that it's like they gone with pain. It's very painful. But imagine this right now. We say, oh, man, you know, I got my house. I can be, if there's something wrong outside, I just come in my house, light my, turn on my lights. Okay. EMP, all the lights are out. All the phones are down. Nothing's where batteries are not, are, are scrambled. They're not working, right? They're short circuit. So you got to turn on no power. Well, I'm going to light oil lamps. I got my candles. I got my oil. We do. We got candles. We got oil. We got old school Western lanterns. Okay, so now, but the light does not give light. It's consumed by darkness. So that yeah. is serious darkness. People are going to repent. They're going to cry out. I told my children, I told my children when I explained this verse to them, this is going to happen. And when it does, you grab the babies and you stay in a room and don't worry and call out to him and you're going to be safe. You're going to be fine. You repent and you hold the children and pray with them and keep them calm. It takes one or two people to calm a, a room full of people. You know what I mean? You tell them, this is the hand of Yahuwah. We know the word. Just be ready, you know, to come out of it on the third day. And uh, what are we going to say, brother? No, I was just saying to, uh, I, when I was reading, when I read these scriptures, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying, but it, it um, the scriptures all, you know, it, Yahuwah meets us right where we're at, you know, when he's talking about on the on the third day and how he has stricken, but he binds us up. And after two days, he revives us. You know, I mean, it's kind of like like, uh, um, um, you know, for two two thousand years uh, after the, the death of Yahushua, you know, we were uh, completely uh, unaware of the name of Yahuwah and who he was. And now now. He has he's reviving us and we know the name and yeah. and and we know um you know the things that brother's talking about about telling our children hey you know these things are going to happen the darkness is going to come because yahuwah says it's going to come uh, because of the condition of the people on the earth but yahuwah does does heal us he does heal us from you know what what we um from our from our former belief system but that's all i wanted to say brother good now, we're going to go to Revelation uh, Hazon chapter 16. We only got two other verses, this one and another one. And we're going to look at the bowls, starting verse 1. And we realize that these, you know, this is, this is happening now, man. It's like the people are worshiping the beast and the image of the beast and the power of the image to speak. But it's, we're going to go ahead and read verse chapter 16 and, and look at uh, 10. And 11 and emphasize it but let's read some of the other bowls before we get to that fifth bowl okay it says uh 16 1 this is the seven bowls of yahuwah's wrath and i heard a loud voice from the dwelling place saying to the seven messengers go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of eloah on the earth and the first went and poured out his bowl upon the arets and an evil and wicked sore came upon men those having the mark of the beast and those worshiping his image. And the second messenger poured out his bowl on the sea and it, and it became blood as of a dead one. And every living creature in the sea died. Now and stop the, for a minute. Yeah. Okay, because you kind of, you're, you're speedy Gonzalez here. Oh, all right, I'm sorry. <laughs> so now, what is the mark that all the earth got together and you have liber you had freedom to go everywhere. You could go do things and go to work. And I'm not, don't say it, but we know what the mark was, the recent mark. I believe there's going to be another one of this. But there was a jab, okay? And they have something in their body. 80% of the population has, has it in their chemistry of their blood and their body unless they detox and repent of their sins, okay? And they... Uh, 
sores broke out. It, well, it's happening now. People are breaking out of sores and problems. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And one yeah. of the signs is uh, lose hair. You know what I mean? Right. So let's keep reading now. And the second messenger poured out his bowl on the sea, and it and it became blood, as of a dead one. And every living creature in the sea died. And the third messenger poured out his bowl on the rivers and the fountains of water, and they became blood. And I heard the messenger of the water saying, you are righteous, O Yahuwah, the one who is and the one who was and the one who shall be, because you have judged these, because they have shed the blood of set apart ones and the Nabi, and you have given them blood to drink, for they deserve it. And I heard another out of the slaughter place saying, Yes, Yahuwah El Shaddai, true and righteous are your judgments. And the fourth messenger poured out his blood on the sun. I mean, poured out his bowl, his bowl on the sun. And it was given to him to burn men with fire. Wow. Just think about it for a minute. Now, I got quickened. I got quickened about something. Japan is working on a system of this huge system that they can create a second sun. It's in science. You know, it's actually science. They're doing it, right? They created this thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is it Japan or China? One of the. Uh, I'm, it's Japan. Is it Japan? Japan, okay. yeah. So now, if more people start creating that, what are they expecting to happen? Some kind of darkness, something that happened. Okay, they, they're they're not. Who would want to? What the suns? Did, did they see it dying away? Is it the only cover dying away of the sun right now? Is they they must know it? something, brother. They must know something. They must know something to be to be. What, what is the purpose of having another sun? Yeah, and and of course we use the word bowl, but in the in the in the Greek, it's the same as the word vial, like a laboratory vial. Like when the the saucer or the chemist got that laboratory vial and they're pouring mixtures, it's really vial, but they use bowl in this translation. So there's something going on in a lab and the messenger has allowed the bowl to spill or the bowl, he's pouring the, the vial or the bowl. And it was given him to burn men with fire. Keep reading six. I mean, chapter nine, uh, verse nine, excuse me. Verse number nine. And men were burned with great heat, and they blasphemed the name, the name of Eloah, who possesses authority over these plagues, and they did not repent to give him esteem. Let's ponder that for a minute. Well, I, I'm, I'm just thinking about that, you know, going, okay, so now the whole world knows his name. Now, the, the, by, by this time, every, the name is gone. The secret, the secret is out rabbinical Judaism that everybody knows his name. So you're not going to fake nobody by saying Adonai or, or whatever other name Hashem, nobody's going to give a, you know what, because they're going to know the name. (laughs) It says that they're blaspheming his name. Okay. And as a matter of fact, we blaspheme his name when we call him by another name. That's right. Cover on him. When we cover his name up, we are blaspheming the name. So this is already true. Even now, even now, because you're blaspheming his name by calling him something else. And the uh, men were burned with great heat, and they blasphemed Yahuwah's name, who possesses authority over these plagues. And then and again, again they, did they not do not repent. repent. Huh? They don't repent. No, they continue to cover up the name. And they continue to, to live in their sin. And, uh, the science will work it out. Science right, will figure right. out this, this plague. No, uh, they'll give us some medication. Uh, they right. give us some food. Follow the science. Follow the science. Yeah, you're gonna be all right, people. It's gonna go. It's gonna go away. Our scientists and astrologers and NASA said, and it's gonna <laughs> go away. But here's another one coming back to back. So Verse they, 10. so they did not repent to give him esteem. They blasphemed his name, and they did not repent to give him esteem. So, and how do you give him esteem? By calling on his name. By calling on his name, they, they, that's how you give him esteem. That's why it says, and they did not repent to give him esteem. Why? Because they were blaspheming his name. 
and not calling on the true name. And the fifth messenger, this is verse number 10, and the fifth messenger poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast. So the fifth messenger has power over the beast. The Malachim of Yahuwah have power over Hasatan. And the fifth messenger poured out his bowl on the throne of, uh -oh. of the, the, the beast. What, so the what, beast has a throne. And what did they call that big computer in Brussels? They call the it beast. the beast. Okay, and his reign became darkened, and they gnawed their tongues from pain. Now, before we go to the next one, listen to this. Some people are, do are saying it's not going to happen everywhere on the earth. It's going to only happen on the throne of the beast to let the people know the father's fighting them personally. You know, that's what some people say. This is what they say. Some people say, no, it's a, it's a, it's a bowl. It's going to cover the earth. No, it doesn't say that. It's just on the throne right. of the beast. So there's a little, dis a little, uh, you know, dialogue. Is it the throne or is it on the throne of your heart? If you got the beast system in your heart, right? Are you going to be receive darkness too? That's you know, right. uh, it, that, that, that all depends on who's enthroned in uh, in your love. That's right. Who, who, uh, is is that Adonai or is it Yahuwah? Is it Jesu Cristo or could it be Gut or Gurin or Odin or Odin? Or which one is which one is on there? Is uh, you know who, who's enthroned on your heart? You're right, brother. That's exactly what that is. Yeah. And they gone their tongue from pain. Oh, man. Well, this is, wow. This so, is... so they're gnawing, they're chewing on their tongues from the pain. Why? Because they're blaspheming the name. So that's why Yahuwah made them to gnaw their tongues. Because, they're, because their tongue is blaspheming his name. Okay? So uh, uh, I would suggest that you go ahead and start calling on the name the true name pretty quickly here <laughs> unless you want to be gnawing on your tongue and yeah. your tongue is like a piece of rubber just flapping around in your mouth because you re because you refuse to call on the name of the most high and we're going to continue to read uh, the bowls in verse 11 verse 11 and they blaspheme the eloah of the shamayim for their pains and their swords and and did not repent of their works they repent they found an excuse science will figure it out right and the sixth messenger poured out his bowl on the great river euphrates and its water was dried up in order to prepare the way of the sovereigns from the east which some people say it's happened already the Euphrates river is dried up they found a lot of pits and cities and foundations of other civilizations over 10,000 years, 5,000 years, 3,000 years ago. Well, you know, brother, I'm so, just waiting for the Chinese to come marching across the Euphrates River. You know, because, but wait a minute. But you, so the Chinese, there's a lot of the stuff being said, the Chinese are going to do this. Chinese that's what they said. That. That's a Christian thing. The, uh, you know, so they're going to do this and that. But you know what? I would not be surprised if the Chinese uh, <laughs> who marched against the Middle East came marching across the Euphrates River. I yeah. mean, think about it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Right. Because they'll be going through the Euphrates River. That's all the Middle East. Yeah. Islamic country. Hey, it is China, too, that is doing that project. It, but Japan is working with them on the artificial sun. Yeah, I, I had heard it's something China, about but, them doing but it. Japan, South Korea, Russia, and India, and the U.S. are all participating in it. What a bunch of losers yeah. <laughs> trying, to chat, a, trying to create a Trying to create a way of sun. escape. Yeah. Right. Okay. And now we're on ver what verse? 13. Are we on? 13. And it says, And I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, three unclean spirits as frogs. For they are spirits of demons doing signs which go out to the sovereigns of the entire world to gather them to battle of the great day of Yahuwah El Shaddai. That's what Almighty means. Uh, that's what El Shaddai means, the Almighty. Okay. See, I am coming as a thief. Baruch is he who is staying awake and guarding his garments. 
least he walked naked and they see his shame. So what are they doing? Guarding their garments. How is he guarding his garments? By being Kodesh, by being kosher. He's guarding his garments. At least he walked naked and they see his shame. And they gathered them together and they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew, Har Megiddo. Amir, Amir. So we stop there uh, because the main focus of all what we read is the, the people don't repent. They're in pain and they don't repent. So something is trying to keep them calm down and they're, they're getting emboldened, emboldened right. to not repent and angry right. at Yahuwah. You know, they're going to say it's Yahuwah, it's those not be. Go burn their houses, go kill them, shut, slash their tires, you know, go after them, get rid of them and the servants of Yahuwah. Now, so here's the, what we're seeing in, 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 in Hazon, but we're in the last place we're going, then we're going to open the floor for everybody chit chat. Is Matt, uh, excuse me, Matthew 2745. It says, and from the sixth hour, there was there was <coughs> darkness over all the land until the ninth for three hours. Now, and, up, and about the ninth, go ahead, brother. Yeah. So uh, go ahead, read, read 246, and then we'll explain. Okay. And about the ninth hour, Yahushua cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, Lema Shabbatani. That is, Ma'el, Ma'el. Why have you forsaken me? So now, this is where they get three days. This is where people put the, the day of darkness in Revelation, the time of darkness, and also in, 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 in Bereshit. They bring them together, and because there's nowhere really where it's, you know, it says that the darkness is going to be three days. They presume that as the Mashiach, Right? Three days right. and three nights in the grave. Right. And also between the sixth and ninth hour, which is, of course, those were watches. They're not now, they, the word Ora is not in Hebrew use. It's a Catholic Roman. It's actually a Roman and Egyptian term. I think term. Yah is trying to tell us something by saying three. Yeah. Three days. Because if you look, if you just type in three days, just type in three days in your search bar on Esword. You're gonna get like, like hundreds of of uh, scriptures that say three days, three days for this, three days for that, three days, right. three days, three days. It's never ending. I'm sorry, I just wanted. To That's think. good. That's true. That's yeah. true. That's true. So, um, I switched the screen now. So let's do this. It's not gonna be this, even though this would be horrible, with the lights out, and I we've been. In tornadoes in Texas, where the power goes out and there's a tornado landed, and it's very scary because you can't even see it. You know, you buckle down, blow your shofars in the rain to make it go away, or is it is it clouds covering the moon at night, or is it a moon uh, eclipse? No, it's a real days of darkness. And it's giving you an idea, which is it going to be? What is it going to be like? Or well, is it it's going to be just like the scripture says, it's going to be so dark that they can I, feel it. I, I am. I imagine this is what I imagine. I don't know if I'm right or wrong. I'm, I think I'm, 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 I'm pretty close. But I think it's something like, I, I, have you ever had a dream where you're falling? Or you have this sensation. It of, feels like you're falling yeah, so feel, dark. Yeah, and, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. So if we have total darkness, you lose, you lose your equilibrium immediately. You can't tell which way is up or down. If you ever been down deep in the ocean, uh, you get that same feeling too. If you uh, you you some some swimmers will actually night. yeah at night some swimmers will actually turn around and swim the opposite way instead of swimming up because they lose their equilibrium and their feeling of where they're at and, and their, feel, their their sense of direction. So I think that that's what it's going to be like. I think we're going to, it's going to be, so total darkness is confusion where um, 
And, and I think that's where the gnawing of the tongue comes from because they won't realize that they're gnawing their tongue because they're, there's no sin. They want to, they have no sensation. So they're gnawing on their tongue to feel something. They don't even know that they're biting their tongues. So, I, I mean, this is what I feel that, that it's going to be like, but like brother said, I mean, for those of us who are in Yahuwah, Yahuwah is going to keep us. We're going to have light. We have the light of Yahuwah inside of us. The same light that created. So I haven't done a deep, deep research, a deep, deep word study on it. But just from seeing what I've seen so far as you guys, if, as you all were going along, like that darkness, like from Jeremiah 4 and so a couple of the other scriptures is associated with a time of mourning. So when that type of darkness comes on the land, there's there's a deep mourning that kind of comes from a, from judgment. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, there's and you know, that would quicken me that. years ago to do right. this. I saw a doctor and he was a Christian doctor and he said, what would happen if the, it was complete darkness? And he said, just like brother said, you won't know what's up. You won't know what's down. Yeah. You would be bumping everything and going crazy, panicking. You have to sit down, calm down and pray. So this guy said, cause your brain will go crazy. And if you live through it, he said, you'll be a zombie. That's what he said. Mm. This is what the doctor said. If you live through it and there's light again, it's going to take you a while to come out of it. Right. You'll be messed up like a zombie. That's why I read it, the article. Abia has something she wants to share. Well, I want to share about uh, Yeshiyahu 60. And he says there that arise shine for your light has come and the steam of Yahuwah has risen upon you. Verse 2, For look, darkness covered the earth, and darkness clouds the people, but Yahuwah arises over you, and his steam is seen upon you. This is the confidence that we have with Yahuwah, you know, when you have that covenant with him. That's a great scripture. Great scripture. Thank you for sharing that. Now, unmute your mic. Share what is ever bubbling up inside you. Almost everybody's still here, so share what's, uh, what we just read, all the scriptures concerning this situation, and unmute your mic and share, ask questions, uh, whatever you, you feel to share, let's participate. Unmute your mic. Well, I just want to say real quick, this reminds me of uh, what I've been studying uh, before on walking before Yahuwah with a clean heart, and there's a lot of scriptures that talk about that. Um, Baruch is the person who is clean in heart because they shall see Eloah. And that's from Matthew 5, 8. Uh, Tehillim 51, 10. Created me a clean heart, O Eloah, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. So when these things happen, we are steadfast, strong in Yahuwah and our immunah in him that we aren't moved. We're the ones who are the light. It's like sister and I were talking about her song, like arise and shine for the light that's in us. Even though they come against us, we have Yahuwah who is protecting us, but a lot hinges on the condition of our heart. So we, we need to have a, a clean heart. It's all attributed to having a clean heart before Yahuwah. Tov to Israel whose heart is clean. And Abiyah has another verse before we go to Veronica. I have another verse, which is in Yehokanan. Uh, chapter 8, verse 12, when Yahushua was spoke to them again and saying, I am the light of the world, and he who follows me shall by no means walk in darkness, but possesses the light of high. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. I'll be out now, Sister Veronica, I'm, uh, I'll mute your mic and share. Shabbat Shalom, family. Um, just I, I think maybe um <clears throat> that because I, I remember I asked brother not too long ago, I don't know if you recall about this three days of darkness. Um on a couple of, you know, uh well probably it was about a month or two ago. And yes, uh, did. and I'm glad that you know this has come up to the surface. Um I have a a book that was given to me it's in its raw form it's not like in a binder book or nothing uh this elderly man he was probably about in his 70s 75 
uh, was writing about avoiding the uh, Armageddon apocalypse. And he was a brother of Yahuwah. And this book is about a thousand pages. And um, he gave it to me. I don't know if he's alive or dead uh, today, right? Or if he's not dead, but, you know, asleep. Um, and I have not gone through it because I was not sure about it. Uh, but now with today's study, I think I'm going to go ahead and go through it. Uh, it's about avoiding, you know, the the three days of darkness or the uh, Armageddon apocalypse. Um, but I did have a dream, not you know, probably some time ago, that we got hit with, uh, you know, with a new a nuclear. Um, I don't know if you call it a bomb or missile or whatever, but I had woke up out of ashes just to see everybody around me. You know, there was so many dead people. Um, and I got up and I was walking amongst them and everything was, was burnt. Like everything was, it was done. It was done. Um, and I, I also think that darkness is anything that, you know, who was not involved in, like, what about he's going to open the eyes of the people to see where they are at spiritually. And, uh, anything that you who is not you know a part of is is darkness uh because you who is the light so I, I you know i i definitely agree with everything that has been said um but i think that you know if if you know if it, if the person is not you who is there's people already in darkness and you know it says in the word that we we are the light of the because he's the light and he's in us and our eyes got like light coming out of it and right. just kind of like uh fantasizing thinking what if this event happens and we're in the same room with people and everything's dark but when we our eyes are open there's light in the room and they see the light out of us and we could witness to them you know what i mean wow. give them the name tell them to repent and they're going to wonder, why is there light all over you? But we're in darkness and because I have Yahuwah, you need to repent. Yes, yes. And, and you know, and and sometimes when I, I look at people, uh, they look at me, they're like, they're like scared of me. But I'm like, why are you scared? I'm just looking at you. And you can see in their face, there's, you know, there's like a fear in their face. And I don't, you know, and, and that's that's how I know that it's not me that they're looking at is that they can see, you know, Yahuwah's light within looking at them. And it's, it's their darkness that looks back at me. Just like when Yahushua was going to go, you know, cast the demons out of that man, the demon said, who are you? I mean, not who are you? It's not our time uh, uh, to, you know, it's not our time yet. And they ask for, you know, to get cast into the swine. Um. So definitely, it's like the 10 versions, you know, with, with five with oil and five without. That's good. Good input. Uh, anybody else, so mute your mic and share your input or ask a question, please. Anybody else? I want to share one more test testimony. I want to share a testimony because uh, when 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 Yahushua said that he we, we have his light, correct? And I had a dream about, uh, this is quite some time um, that we were in a, there's a feast or event that Eliyahu and I would, were, were there attending. And all of a sudden there was a, a, like a big boom. And then there was, the whole place was so dark. And then the other thing that I saw is that then we went to our room and I'm hearing the gunshots like somebody opening the door and then gunshots. And then before they come to our room, I was praying and I was sitting beside me and I said, Father, I said, who are these people? And then the father said in, in my in my Ruhak that to proclaim the 91st Psalm that I have to speak it. And, and specifically I heard that word that don't look at them in their eyes, don't look up, look down. And then um, after the dream, I said, Father, what does that mean? Because he was showing us that there's light in our eyes that if I look up on the door when they're coming, 
they will see that light because they come came to our door open our door but they didn't uh, fire their gun i can feel the 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 tip of the gun kind of touching me but they never fired the gun and then they 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 walked away that's why when when yahushua said there's light in us because the light of yahushua is in us and then the second testimony is like two weeks ago i was working i was working at ross and i was on the floor and there was a lady she's from um greece because I talked to her after that. She was looking at me, looking at me. She said, uh, ma'am, she said, she said about my age. And she said, I can see a bright light in you. And that just kind of, kind of backed me off a little bit in my mind. What is she talking about? And that's the light of Yahuwah in us. We don't see it, but people see it in us, you know. So wherever we are, we have that light of Yahuwah and Yahushua in us. I just want to encourage you that. I mean. Hallelujah. Thank you. Appreciate it, honey. All right. Anybody else? Unmute your mic and share, please. Anybody else? Yug, you you turn off your mic. Shabbat shalom. All right. Yeah, uh, I do have a question, though. Like understanding, like uh, times are coming and, and it may be hard or, you know, uh, understanding like how everything may play out. Why stay around? Why not just leave? Why is the scenario stay here during destruction? As opposed, as opposed to, hey, this is about to happen. You may want to leave. Well, that's a good question for you. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, you're in California. You're in the thick of it, <laughs> like people in New York. You know, it doesn't matter where you are. Yeah, if you get in a secluded place, it might just take longer to get to you. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, I understand. I think that um, that it doesn't matter where you're at. That Yahuwah is going to be with you. That's right. I mean, you can be in the worst place on earth, and as long as Abba is with you, then you're protected and guarded. But um, if not, I mean, your your whole world's going to turn dark really quick. And, and if the Father leads you and makes a way of escape to go somewhere a little distant away, yes, it, it takes work. It takes money. Mm -hmm. You know, and you mm -hmm. got a family, but if it's if it's possible and you do it, it, it'll be great. But you'll see it coming from the horizon. You'll see it from the distance. You know, mm -hmm. uh, there's a brother that was in Arizona, Phoenix. He's a messianic brother. He's his sister Carmen's not on the air, but she knows them, and he has this Shabbat fellowship, and he does everything online, and he's in a great place where we were gonna go about a few hundred miles from here off the 10 freeway and 30 something miles from the 10 freeway when you get mm -hmm. off. And he has a ranch and he's got cattle and he's he does the feast. It's a good place to go for the feast. But is, is he totally escaped? No, he's not. It's eventually 30 something miles from the 10 freeway is not far enough. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, yeah. Um, so, um, because uh, you can, I mean, you, it, no matter what you have, if you're miles away from anything, you can't have lights on at night because people are going to see the light and come to it. They want to take it. You know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. So there's certain rules you would have to play to be quiet and uh, and have all the equipment to hear what's going on. It'll buy you time, I believe, and the Father leads you to do it. You do it. Um, I've had opportunities. I have a couple places to go if I have to. You know, we know people that invited us, and all it takes is about a tank and a half uh, to get there. Uh, but um, I chose to be in a very popular area in order to minister and witness. Until the Father changes that, uh, it's time to leave now. Then we'll leave. You know what I mean? But uh, I want to be in the thick of it, what we're at. It's not, you know, really in the thick of it, like California, New York, Chicago. 
but we're in the thick of it enough that we can tell people to repent, to shuvah for the sovereignty of Yahuwah is at hand. You know what I mean? And, um, and to be the light and the salt of our area. doesn't matter where you're at, whether you're in the deepest depth of the oceans or in the highest shamayin, Yah is able to reach everywhere. doesn't matter where it's at. So whatever your fate is, it's going to come, or my fate is, it's going to come to me, no matter where I'm at. Yahuwah can reach me anywhere. Um, blow a shofar in Zion and sound an alarm in my Kodesh mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the earth tremble for the day of Yahuwah is coming, for it is a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like the morning clouds spread over the mountains. A people, many and strong, the like of whom has never been, nor shall there ever be again after them to the years of many generations. Uh, 2.10 says, the earth shall tremble before them, the Shamaim shall shake, sun and moon shall be darkened, and the stars withdraw their brightness. So now that that, that, is, that, that is sounds darkness. to me like total darkness. That is total darkness. That's yeah. right. Wow. Excellent verse. Thank you. Write that down, people. Shabbat shalom. Johanna, Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, sister. It's good to see you again. Yeah. I, I, do I, with you. I just want to share my own experience. Uh, I was in a room. In the, it's supposed to be the uh, church building in West Mauritius. So it is supposed to be a, a kadosh place. So I was put in this room, which I'm not usually not uh, there, but I was put in this room. And then in the middle of the night, when I woke up, it was total darkness. It was so dark that I could not see anything. Just like uh, I'm reminded of what we were um, listening to, that darkness, total darkness, that you cannot even see your hand it was that wow. and then uh, I was uh, I wasn't really that fearful because I say that I'm in the supposed to be in the house of uh, Yahuwah so why should I fear so I started to pray but I was a bit st uh, startled lah, because why is it so dark because I've never experienced before that so after that I prayed then I felt better then I slept again then the, the next night I woke up was the same thing again. So this time before I went to sleep, I told myself that where is the door? You know, I told myself the, the, the orientation of the place. Where is the door of the room? Where is the cupboard and all that? So the next time when I woke up, I was able, I was I felt better. But of course through prayer. And because I believe that uh, Yahuwah is, is with me and Yahushua, I have Yahushua. And I have um, that bonus. So after that, I, I had no problem anymore. Good. Thank you. Hallelujah. That's a great testimony. Great yeah, so perhaps that's a Yahuwah allowing me to experience what it's like to be total darkness. Huh. I cannot even see anything, you know, because I'm, I'm, I, I was in a familiar place. I've been there many times and I've even uh, stayed there for about a year, but it was a different room, you know, it's a different room. So perhaps there's something wrong with that room. <laughs> yeah, there must be something in that room yeah yeah there was darkness in that room but the father gave you shalom and protection yeah. praise yeah praise that's a awesome yeah. awesome yeah, hallelujah yeah. thank you for sharing let's pray let's pray right now yahuwah we are so grateful for this opportunity to be together we know that in the future, there might be a time, there'll be a blackout for many of us. And we won't be able to pray with one another. We won't be able to share videos in conversations. We're so grateful, Simka, Kara, that we have the great opportunity doing it through this technology. People from everywhere in the four corners of this earth to have the chance to meet, fellowship, and be together. We just thank you. And as we give each other 
hukma and da'at, advice, to prepare for these times ahead. To cast perfect love, cast out fear. To take, because knowledge has a help to cast out fear. When you have knowledge of certain events in the future or now to be prepared for. So we thank you, Father. You're our great physician. You're our great uh, help in time of need. You are everything to us, and you are a lamp upon our feet in this time of darkness, which I look at people's eyes, and we see so much darkness in them, in their personality, in their character. But you have allowed us to come out of the darkness into light, into you. And we pray for everybody. No matter what happens, we'll be one in the Ruach of Yahuwah with one another. And we thank you that everybody has come in and tuned in together. So with that, we'll have Brother close in prayer with more in the Shem of Yoshua. Abba Yah, we give you thanks, Abba Kodesh, for uh, having all these um, all these Kodeshim here with us, Abba. We ask that you protect them. I pray shalom over their lives, Abba. I pray um, prosperity into their lives, Yah, into all of us, and health, Father. Uh, prosperity of our in our bodies and in our finances, um, Abba, Yah, in our minds, Yah, Abba, that you will protect us from the enemy, that your will will be done in our lives, Abba, Yah, that, that your will will be done here on the Aret, as it is in the Shamayim, you are the maker of all things and we give you esteem for everything that you have done for us. We give you great esteem, Abba, in the Shem Yahushua HaMashiach. We pray that everybody will come back here safely on the next Shabbat. Praise Hallelujah. Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, everybody, we'll see you, Abba willing, next week. And we thank you for this time to be with you in fellowship and keep us in prayer. And we'll keep you in prayer. Shalom, shalom. One another. Shalom. Thanks, guys. Shabbat shalom, everybody.